Morning, y'all. It is September 28th, 2023. As always, we have a bunch of new AI papers published today. GPT summaries of them. Prereq knowledge if you want to read them yourselves. Make sure you know what's happening before you do. Citations that are probably incorrect. All of these summaries, prereq citations on my Substack link in description to the daily newsletter. Uh, let's get to it. Teaching text to image models to communicate. What the heck? Address the problem of dialogue to image generation, where the goal is to generate a realistic image based on a given dialogue context. Propose a tailored fine tuning approach that leverages pre trained text to image models to generate images directly from dialogue without any intermediate translation. Wait. So the goal for this is not to just make cool images related to the dialogue. I assume the goal is to make images of people having dialogue and to have that make sense, right? Because for a second I was thinking like you can just have GPT rephrase stuff and make a prompt, but no, I think this is actually having images of people engaging in dialogue and clearly demonstrating who is currently speaking um, and the emotions that are resultant of the dialogue, the text that it's inferring from. Okay. Uh, the authors highlight the challenges of treating dialogue to image generation as a text to image generation task and emphasize the need to capture the rich information embedded in dialogue. Can't you just use, um, what's that formatting language? SSML, I think. I forget what it stands for, but it's like you have actual formatting to show when new speakers happen and when like a certain like emotion is happening and there's like a little icon for laughter and stuff. That's a thing, right? Can't you just use that even though it's Probably aren't huge data, data sets out there, I'm guessing, but to differentiate between speakers in the dialogue, the authors append a special symbol before each turn of the dialogue, fine-tune pre-trained text to image models with this modified dialogue input to enable them to generate images conditioned on the dialogue context. They conduct experiments on the photo chat data set and evaluate performance of their approach using metrics such as image fidelity and image quality. I don't care, honestly. Robust internal representations for domain generalization. A comprehensive survey of their research in transfer learning using embedding spaces focuses on addressing the challenge of continual learning and limited availability of labeled, labeled data, proposes a framework that leverages shared embedding spaces to transfer knowledge between different problems and improve learning outcomes. Yeah, sharing embedding spaces to transfer knowledge between different problems, that makes sense. Uh, formulated as an optimization problem where the objective is to minimize the empirical error on the training data set for each problem while also incorporating measures of similarity or relationship between problems. Um, so yeah, you have to create this embedding space. All the models contribute to creating the embedding space. Um, interesting. Uh, and measures of similarity or relationships between the problems? What's that? How, how, would, how would you do that? Um, shared embedding space captures the similarities between the distributions of different problems, allowing for effective knowledge transfer. Uh, covers various learning scenarios, including low-shot learning, unsupervised domain adaptation, zero-shot learning, and low-shot learning goals to establish relationships between low-resource and high-resource classes through the shared embedding space, enabling robust performance on low-resource classes. Unsupervised domain adaptation aims to bridge the gap domain gap between labeled source domains and unlabeled target domains by aligning. Okay, I don't care too much more. Um, I am going to add this as a potential citation. I can think of a paper that I would potentially like to write that would be a good thing to cite, maybe. Method and validation for optimal lineup creation for daily fantasy football using machine learning and linear programming. Not going to lie, I just wanted to um, get a leg up in fantasy football. But it says daily. Is it really talking about daily fantasy football? That's a real shame. I don't do daily. Uh, I don't. If it's just daily, I don't care. Um, yeah, if it's daily, who cares? Might be good for gambling, but. Maximum weight entropy. 
addresses the problem of uncertainty quantification and out of distribution detection and deep learning using Bayesian and ensemble methods, proposes a solution to the lack of prediction diversity observed in standard approaches when used on out of distribution data, argue that this lack of diversity is mainly due to a lack of weight diversity in the models, which is caused by over-regularization processes such as weight decay and zero mean centered Gaussian priors. I thought normalization, weight decay, whatnot, was supposed to help generalize, but now they hurt generalization? Huh? What? What are we doing here? Um, I agree that we, like, I, that never really made too much sense to me, this idea that normalization helped generalization. I think it was an empirical observation. I don't think it was any actual theory, but I could be wrong on that. Um, and it never seemed intuitive to me. Um, so maybe these people are right instead. I don't know. But I know that normalization helped with training. Um, and I guess helping with training helps with, normal, with generalization or something or other kind of thing. And I don't know. But if you don't weight decay and you don't normalize, what are you, how are you going to train this thing? That sounds hard. To address this issue, the author proposed adopting the maximum entry principle for the weight distribution with the aim of maximizing weight diversity formulate the problem as a trade-off between the average empirical risk and the weight distribution entropy, develop an optimization algorithm called maximum weight entropy to solve it. It penalizes the training loss with a term that encourages an increase in weight distribution entropy. Interesting. Provide theoretical and numerical results to assess efficiency, show that it significantly increases prediction diversity compared to standard methods, especially for out-of-distribution data, compare it with other state-of-the-art methods on an extensive out of distribution detection benchmark and demonstrated superiority in terms of performance. This is very cool. Um, this is, as far as I'm concerned, a citation from my entropy intelligence paper, probably. Um, very exciting. What the heck? No, no, no. Adding on too many papers. Learning the efficient frontier. Propose a neural approximation framework called Neural EF to solve the efficient frontier problem in portfolio optimization. Problem involves finding optimal allocation of resources among risky assets to maximize return while respecting various constraints. Traditional approach to solving this problem is through convex optimization, which can be computationally expensive. They introduce this method as a fast and accurate alternative to solving that problem. Never been very fond of the portfolio people. It uses a stack transformer encoder architecture, which treats the EF problem as a sequence to sequence problem. Inputs to the model are expected are the expected returns, volatilities, correlations, and other constraints of the assets, and output is the optimal allocation of resources. This is I don't care. It's silly. ICML 2023 Topological Deep Learning Challenge Design and Results Aim to promote reproducible research in the field of topological deep learning by asking participants to implement and train topological neural networks using the open source software Topo Model X. Participants were required to implement a pre-existing TNN from the literature and train it on a toy data set of their choice. Challenge received 32 submissions, out of which 28 qualified. These submissions implemented a variety of TNNs across four topological domains, hypergraph, simplic, simplicial, simplical, simplicial, cellular, and combinatorial. Submissions were evaluated based on the correctness of the implementation, code readability, and adherence to Topo Model X's APIs, and quality of the written documentation and unit tests. Uh, resulted in implementation of 23 unique TNN models. Winners were determined using the con Condorcet method, where each participant, team, and additional reviewers selected the best and second best model implementation in each topological domain. Winners were announced publicly at the ICML workshop. Yada, yada, yada. Contributed to the availability of open source algorithms and benchmarking in topological deep learning. Foster reproducible research by encouraging participants to adhere to software engineering best practices and provide clear documentation. A uh, potential critique of the challenge is that it focused on the implementation and correctness of the TNN models rather than their performance on real-world tasks. However, the challenge organizers aim to prioritize clean code and accurate model architectures to promote reproducibility. Implementation, okay, whatever. Huh. 
How to catch an AI liar, lie detection in black box LLMs by asking unrelated questions. Da, 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 da. Define a lie as an incorrect statement produced by the model despite the model knowing the correct answer. So not just a hallucination, but it has to actually potentially be retrievably correct. Like there, are, like there, To know the answer means that like, there must be some way to prompt it to get the right answer, therefore it knows the answer. Uh, develop a simple black box lie detector that does not require access to the LLM's internal workings or ground truth knowledge. It works by asking a predefined set of unrelated follow-up questions after a, after a suspected lie and feeding the LLM's yes-no answers into a logistic regression classifier. Huh? Why would you... This, so this is... Okay, it's a black box method, obviously. This is... How would that even work? Why, why does that work? Demonstrate the effectiveness and generality of the, their lie detector through ex extensive experiments. Train the detector on lies generated by GPT-3.5 using specific lie instruction prompts and show that it generalizes well to other LLM architectures. Models fine-tuned to lie in different conversation topics. It achieves a high accuracy in detecting lies even in scenarios where LLMs produce sycophantic lies or goal-directed lies in real-life scenarios such as sales. Implications, uh, scenarios where LLMs are controlled by external parties such as in online interactions or AI systems are used for malicious purposes. It can help detect and mitigate the risks associated with lying models. Scenarios where LLMs unintentionally learn to lie, the lie detector can serve as a baseline for developers to reward honesty during training, prevent propagation of false information. This is interesting if it actually works. I'm tempted to read this because it sounds cool. Um, Acknowledge that the detector has limitations and room for improvement. For example, they did not explore every possible LLM access setting, and the elicitation questions were created in an ad hoc manner without tuning. Future work can focus on enhancing the lie detector and exploring different LLM access settings. Overall, this research provides valuable insights into the detection of lies generated by LLMs. This is cool. I'm going to add, I want to read that. Um, eventually, might be in my list of stuff to read that gets trimmed or removed later, but whatever. Graph neural prompting with large language models proposes a new method to enhance performance of pre-trained LLMs in capturing and utilizing knowledge from knowledge graphs. They address the limitations in accurately capturing grounded knowledge and the challenges of incorporating knowledge graphs into LLMs. Right now, I'm just using, as of yesterday actually, um, just using embeddings. There's an Obsidian plugin for my Obsidian knowledge graph that just uses the embeddings to find stuff. And it works reasonably well. Like I go through the sources it has in there and like maybe half of them are somewhat related kind of thing. The other half are pretty random. Um, due to their large number of parameters and high computational cost, the GMP method consists of several components, a graph neural network, coder, a cross-modality pooling module, a domain projector, a self-supervised link prediction objective. Okay, well, it's they're improving. Whatever, um, what's happening here? Um, frozen. Um, so they could implement their thing, graph neural prompting, on a frozen language model and get a huge. Well, actually, sorry. Notice the axis starts at um, starts right there. So they they get a thirteen uh, percent, thirteen percentage, thirteen percent, not thirty percentage points, thirteen percent increase um, and then add on some fine tuning you get an extra two three percent kind of thing um, to your oh wait, wait 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 no 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 this case is laura fine tuning so just a language model that was fine tuned to use knowledge graphs and their method graph neural prompting only improved that by two percent um okay sounds less impressive at that point then but um glad that this stuff is happening but i don't need to read it Examining the values reflected by children during AI problem formulation. Aim to understand how children conceptualize and embed their values in AI systems that they themselves design. Engaged a group of five children age 8 to 13 and five adult co-designers in a co-design session using a modified storyboard technique. Children were asked to imagine their own teachable machines, which are AI systems that can be trained by the user. Researchers will use the Rokeach Value Survey, a psychological value framework to analyze the values reflected in the children's designs. In what way are children designing AIs? I'm confused. Are they just giving a moral default to like 
to uh, adhere to. Study found that children's designs appealed to instrumental values, which are preferred modes of behavior. Specifically, the designs reflected the values of capability, logic, helpfulness, and responsibility. I don't care. Enhancing sharpness aware optimization through variance suppression. New optimization approach called variance suppressed sharpness aware optimization to address the issue of a friendly adversary in sharpness aware minimization. It's an optimization method that enhances the generalization ability of deep neural networks by minimizing the maximum loss caused by an adversary perturbing the parameters within a neighborhood. Whatever. Deep Model Fusion, a survey. Uh, deep Model Fusion is a technique that merges the parameters or predictions of multiple deep learning models into a single one. Goal is to combine the abilities of different models to achieve better performance and improve the accuracy and robustness of the final model. Categorizes existing Deep Model Fusion methods into four categories. Mode connectivity, alignment, weight average, and ensemble learning. Mode connectivity refers to the ability to connect the solutions obtained by gradient-based optimization in weight space via a path of non-increasing loss. This allows for the fusion of models that are more suitable for model fusion along the low. I, I don't know. I don't care. An evaluation of ChatGPT-4's qualitative spatial reason capabilities in RCC8. Um, I was thinking about a quick little paper um, that has to do with spatial reasoning capabilities in ChatGPT. Uh, evaluates the qualitative spatial reasoning capabilities of GPT-4, an LLM, in the context of the RCC-8 calculus. Quantitative spatial reasoning involves represent representing and reasoning about spatial information using qualitative relations. Uh, consists of eight base relations that describe different spatial configurations. First experiment focuses on compositional reasoning in RCC-8. Prompts ChatGPT4 with pairs of relations and asks it to determine the possible relations between the two objects based on the compo composition of the given relations. Results show it correctly predicts 70% of possible relations with some variations in accuracy for different relations, but it fails to identify all the possible relations and sometimes makes incorrect predictions. Second experiment. Investigates preferred compositions, whatever that means. Ten humans tend to have a preferred relation when composing two relations based on computational simplicity. Author compares ChatGPT's preferred compositions with those of humans. Results show GPT-4 only agrees with average human preference in 41% of cases. Sometimes makes logically inc inconsistent predictions and fails to identify unique compositions. Performs an anonymized version of the experiments to test whether ChatGPT 4's performance is influenced by prior knowledge of RCC 8. Results show a slight decrease in accuracy, indicating that ChatGPT 4's performance is not solely based on prior knowledge. Experiments demonstrate that ChatGPT 4 has some ability to reason about qualitative spatial relations, um, but its performance is far from perfect, struggles with identifying all possible relations, and often makes incorrect predictions or fails to identify unique compositions. Results suggest that while LLMs may have some knowledge of qual qualitative spatial reasoning, from their training data, they still have limitations in performing complex spatial reasoning tasks. Potential critique is evaluations limited to a single LLM. Okay, um, I'm going to add it because it might be relevant, although it doesn't sound to be very supportive. But if it's not supportive, I want to actually like be proven wrong. So that's cool. A survey of chain of thought reasoning advances frontiers in future. Uh, they provide a comprehensive analysis, uh, including methods used to construct chain of thoughts, uh, structural variants of chain of thought, and the enhancement methods for chain of thought. Categorize construction of chain of thought into three approaches manual, automatic, and semi automatic. Manual involves manually providing natural language or programming language rationales to the demonstrations. Automatic generates reasoning chains automatically, either through zero-shot prompting or by clustering and selecting representative exemplars. Semi-automatic combines manual and automatic methods to construct the reasoning paths. Discuss structural variants of chain of thought, which refers to different ways of organizing the reasoning steps. These variants include AOT, TOT, SOT, and GOT, which are, I think, uh, tree of thought, 
graph of thoughts. I don't know what the other, what the other two are. I have no clue. Um, explore enhancement methods for chain of thought, which aim to improve reliability, efficiency, and generalization. Methods include verify and refine approaches, question decomposition, external knowledge integration, and vote and rank strategies. Also highlights practical applications. Okay, I'm just going to add this for the learn prompting, guys, um, just in case that actually becomes a thing. And that is it for today. Uh, as always, if you want to read these summaries and the prereq knowledge listed and the citations, check out my daily newsletter, link in description. If you want to discuss stuff like this with other internet nerds, I call them tuna dorks, go ahead and join the Discord, also link in description. Please like, subscribe, comment, YouTube things, share, hit the bell. End of video.